Ladies and gentlemen, drop your totems and get ready! We're back on the Legion Alpha and finally I can bring to you the Elemental Shaman. I've had a nightmare filming this one. Uh, the dungeons, it took me eight dungeons to get close to what looks like a full dungeon. Uh, it will be at the end of this video for those of you who want to avoid spoilers. Don't worry, you will know when it is coming. But we will be doing a dungeon playthrough so you can th see this light show in action. This full of fireworks laser display. It is Times Square New Year's Eve, baby. They've done a really good job with the Elemental Shaman. I'm more than impressed uh, with what they're putting out here. So, be prepared for that. I believe we went through six healers in that one dungeon. It's a fucking nightmare. It's not the best playthrough I've ever done by any means. But still, it's a playthrough. You'll get a general idea of what's going on. What is happening with the Elemental Shaman then? At a super basic level, all they did was fuck mana off and fuck off uh, charges of Maelstrom and just turn Maelstrom into a resource. And this solved nearly every problem the Elemental Shaman ever had. They were like, why don't we just do this? It was like, oh yeah, that works. So some of the big classic problems or the big classic problem of the Elemental Shaman and why it saw so much uh, underrepresentation during Warlords of Raynor, particularly in the raiding world, was that their niche was basically sustained AoE, and they were reasonably crap at most other things compared to other classes. Like target switching was a big pain in the ass because of the restrictions on lava burst and flame sharks and the cooldowns and all that kind of stuff. And it just made them pretty garbage. They couldn't switch up quick enough compared to everyone else and it just turned into a big mess. Might as well play something else, especially in a world of Starfall and cool warlock shit going on. And mages just, you know, generally just rocking the world. I'm happy to say that so far in Legion, they have achieved several things. One, tight switching is no longer a thing. You don't even worry about it one little bit. You have some of the best talent setups I've seen so far in order to not only fit many different niches, but also decide, and this is the important one, how you will like to play your Elemental Shaman. Now, I will always put a caveat with that. It's potentially, there is a possibility, there's a chance, friends, that ultimately when this thing goes live is the actual numbers and the maths and the balancing and all that kind of stuff will mean that you do not have that choice. But as it stands right now, you do. You do have the choice in how you want to play. So let's go over the basics and I'll explain it for you. But if you want a quick overview, there you go. It's fucking awesome. You will enjoy it. Uh, Thunderstorm's still here. Flame Shock is still here. Now costs 0 to 20 Maelstrom. That means you can cast it even if you have nothing. Yeah, target switching is not a problem. You can press it without a worry in the world. It has no cooldown. You can press it a million times if you want to and you'll be fine. Uh, and uh, it increases its duration based on Maelstrom. Not its damage. Don't need to worry about that. It increases its duration based on the Maelstrom that you currently have up to 20. Right? So it will double it if you have 20. But it means that you can just cast it away. This uh, demo lock here, just ignore that shit. Thinks he's all funny with his big display. <laughs> he has no idea. He has no idea. Uh, Lightning Bolt's still here. Now, one thing I will point out here is they have added huge weight to your nature spells. That's right. They tried to strike a balance between fire and nature. They really worked hard at that. And now there is big weight shifted over to nature, as well as big weight that you can give via talents towards fire damage as well. We still have Chain Lightning, now naturally goes to five targets, something to bear in mind there. We still have Purge, we still have Wind Shear, which is super fucking annoying. I do a demonstration of this, actually, in the fight. You'll notice that Wind Shear has a duration of 25 yards. It's the worst thing of all time. Our Lightning Bolt is 40, and you can't do anything about this. It's 25 yards, it's criminal. And they really need to change this to 40 yards or do something with it, because it's just so frustrating. Because, of course, you want to be max range while you're doing, like, ra raid boss DPS, right? Most of the time. And you can't interrupt or be useful in any, any manner whatsoever. Uh, we still have Bloodlust. We still have our Fire Elemental. No longer starts traveling around trying to melee. just casts. We have our Earth Elemental, which uh, I don't know whether this is bugged or what. I'm not seeing a report. I've done some research on it. This thing is practically fucking useless. It does nothing. In the eight dungeons, it took me to actually film one sort of complete dungeon. Uh, I had to. I had tanks dying left and right all the fucking time. Earth, Earth Elemental out. Useless. Just did nothing. Uh, which was a crying shame. We still have Earthquake, but it's now Earthquake Totem. It costs 40 Maelstrom. And as long as you have the Maelstrom, you can drop as many of these as you fucking want. At one point, you can have like four Earthquakes going at once. Yeah, it's pretty fucking cool. And we still have Lava Burst, which is the guaranteed crit. If the target is affected by Flame Strike. Uh, flame Shock, as I should say. So you can see it does 60,000 damage for your Lava Burst. It still carries the 8 second cooldown. And Lava Burst is 47,000 damage. This means there is not... I mean, it's a reasonable discrepancy, but not huge. You will notice I played the level 110, and that's because there's some stuff in the artifact quest that is relevant to what you will be playing at the endgame. 
And we still have Earth Shock as our dump. So, the super basic playstyle will be Flame Shock on. Keep Lava Burst on cooldown. Yeah, you can see it still munches for those Lava Surge charges. Very fucking annoying. Build up your Maelstrom, as you can see here, and then dump it with Earth Shock, yeah? If you reach 100, it will notify you that, hey, by the way, you've reached 100 Maelstrom. You might want to get rid of it with Earth Shock. The general playstyle will still remain as it is in Wallace of Draenor. He's trying to get as close to 100 as possible without really wasting it, yeah? And Earth Shock is your big dump. On top of that, we naturally pick up the ability Stormkeeper. This comes from the Fist of Raden, which is our artifact weapon. So what does Stormkeeper do? Now, this is going to seem really mundane, but it's not at all. You raise the Fist of Raden to the sky. You absorb all nearby electric energy, causing your next three lightning bolts or chain lightnings to deal 200% increased damage. What? One minute cooldown just does double damage. Aha! Right. Yeah. Now this is why I'm on the level 110. Power of the Maelstrom. A little bit of a distance to travel. You start here, so you're going to come all the way around here. When you cast Lava Burst, you have a chance to become supercharged with elemental energy, causing your next three lightning bolts to overload two additional times. Power of the Maelstrom is beast <laughs> when you pair it up with Stormkeeper. Now, it does have one problem. Power of the Maelstrom procs from Lava Burst. So we should get one straight away. There it is. See the buff? Power of the Maelstrom. So then what you do is raise your fist to the sky. And then you put out some of the dirtiest lightning bolts in the history of mankind. Look at the damage that comes out with. Oh! It's so fucking good. It adds so much meat and gravy to lightning bolt. And this is what I'm saying. This bonus damage towards uh, nature spells. And making lightning bolt... Not just the filler spell, you know? Like, what? It's like, it's just lightning bolt, you know? It's kind of shitty. Now they've started to add weight to it. You probably just saw a little uh, Storm Ellie's approach. That was just Fury of the Storms. So whenever you activate Stormkeeper, nothing you can do about it. There's not much else for me to show you in the Artifact Tree, but I wanted you to be aware that Power of the Maelstrom is a buff that you will be, you will be tracking come Legion, as it stands right now. Now, that is not the only thing you'll be tracking. Further from the shift from Ward into Legion, you are going to have a lot of buffs to keep an eye on with the Elemental Shaman. More so than you've ever seen in the past. And I'm going to try and point most of them out to you. So we've got cooldowns like Stormkeeper. I want to also point out that Stormkeeper affects Chain Lightning. That means... That means that your ordinary, when you get to big AoE, the Elemental Shaman still breaks down into Chain Lightning and Earthquake. Yeah, as it is in Ward. But this just one spell addition here and affecting the next three chain lightnings, it adds so la so much fucking cock girth to your attacks that it really mixes that ordinarily mundane task up. Like, I know some people love chain lightning spam and earthquake. That's fine. Now add into it that those chain lightnings start hitting for ridiculous numbers. Like, crazy numbers when you pop it with a Stormkeeper. And not only that, before you do it, you literally raise your fist into the fucking sky. And then you go, wood. Boom! And you'll see like 200,000 plus off multiple targets. Like a million hit chain lightnings. God damn, it's satisfying, guys. Super, super satisfying. So that's something you want to bear in mind there. Stormkeeper looks boring, isn't, is what I want to tell you. It looks boring, isn't. Okay, let's get to the talents then so you can see how we can pick and choose between different playstyles, which is definitely the most interesting part here. So we have Path of Flame. What does this do? Lava Burst deals 10% more damage, fine, but now it will start spreading Flame Shock to a nearby target. Yeah? So once you have one Flame Shock up, once you start Lava Bursting that target, your Flame Shock is going to start naturally spreading. This obviously starts to increase the amount of times that you will proc Lava Surge. Yeah? When Flame Shock ticks, you have a chance to get the instant cast Lava Burst. Let me tell you, at about 2 plus, seriously, 2 plus with Path of Flame and Elemental Fusion, this is just a talent that gives 10% increased chance for large Lava Surge to occur, you become a turret. An absolute turret. Now, you've probably noticed from the bar, Spirit Walker's Grace is missing. It's gone. And that might make you go, Ah, oh, my mobility! I used to be able to cast Lightning Bolt on the move all the time, and now I had Spirit Walker's Grace. It was awesome. It was fun. Don't even worry about it. The way the talent system is designed is if you want massive amounts of mobility, it's just super easy to get, guys. Super easy to get. Not a problem at all. This changes you into a very fire hep. This one talent is the starting point for huge fire-based damage. Which shifts away from nature damage all into lava burst, yeah? You're going to shift all the way into that by picking and choosing some other talents I'll tell you about in a second. Also, this opens the door for a style of play where, let's say you've got a boss or a primary target and a five-man that needs to die. But there are certainly adds about, but they're inconsequential for the remainder of the fight or they're not your priority. Simply using them as flame shock... Um, 
flame shock dummies essentially means that you absolutely turn your single target dps through the roof through the use of lava burst while maintaining huge amounts of mobility but perhaps you don't want to play that way perhaps you prefer nature damage Perhaps there aren't ads to really scum some flame shocks off or whatever. You can go over to Earthen Rage. Earthen Rage means that you now get that same mastery effect. Now, in the early look I did at the Elemental Sham, you'll notice that the mastery effect was missing. And it was very cool. A lot of people like, Bliss, we loved that animation. And I talk about the rocks coming out of the ground. Yeah, the rocks coming out of the ground and slicing into the target. It's very cool. A lot of people like that. So they've brought that back in the form of Earthen Rage. Now, Earthen Rage, despite coming out of the ground, will actually deal fire damage. Now, there's a reason for that we'll get into shortly. So this is kind of your single target ability, okay? So your damaging spells, gonna go and do deeps, you're gonna be doing your normal stuff, and there you go, you get the effects coming out there of the uh, that classic effect that your old mastery shooting out through the sky, yeah? So nothing to worry about there, that's just a single target passive. Doesn't do anything to gameplay, you can't do anything with it. It's more mundane than Path of Flame. Totem Mastery. Now, this is the worst of the three. Not that it isn't useful, it's just fucking boring. It's a spell that lasts 30 seconds with a 30 second cooldown. Choke me to death with spells like this. They're so bad. You can only lose with talents like this. You can only lose because you'll never get it perfect every time, which means you're missing out on time with this. What it does is it gives the flavor of totems back, as you've probably already told seen. Shamans in general just don't have a lot of totem usage beyond, like, very niche totem. So if you want your totems, you can have your totems. There they are. And what does it do? You get a resonance totems, which generates maelstrom. You have a storm totem, which increases the chance for a lightning bolt to trigger elemental overload, which is the double. Ember totem, increasing flame, block, flame shock damage. And tailwind totem, giving you 3% haste. Th when do you use this one? Generally, when you're doing huge amounts of consistent AoE is when I found it being useful. If I can, I avoid this like the plague, because it's just so fucking dull all the time it never does anything fun it just sits there you either have it up or you don't honestly the buffs it gives are so minor they're incremental and affect like four different things you don't even notice it happening it's just a spell if it had it like it, how would we fix this how would i fix this i like the idea of dropping totems to get a burst so i would prefer them to last 15 seconds with a 30 second cooldown that means i can think about pairing it up with Stormkeeper, but i don't have to i can use it multiple times in that window i could do it with various trinket buffs i could do i can make choices with it i can't make choices with this i just have to keep it down all the time and come live if this is around you'll just have a tell me when or a week or a saying in five seconds press total mastery that's about it really needs some rethinking here uh, gust of wind is cool uh, I bet I've not put it on the right button. There we go. Yep. Whee! It's just a little hop, skip, and a jump. Uh, it looks kind of cool. When I first rolled the Elemental Shaman for the Artifact Quest, I used this. Unfortunately, it just takes way too fucking long. The animation is massive. It's like two seconds or something. Might not sound a lot to some, some of you guys, but if you've ever sort of pushed your DPS properly, this is fucking forever. <laughs> this is forever. It's like so long compared to like being able to move and recast a Flame Shock or use Lava Surge procs or interrupt or purge or redrop totems. I'll do something, anything other than just be floating in the air for a few seconds. This is like being self CC'd. Uh, Ancestral Guidance. Now, I will point out here, although it is classically a hybrid class, um, your healing is absolutely dog shit. Uh, you only get Healing Surge, which heals for 100,000. It ain't that much in a world where you have 1.6 million HP. Right? 1.6 million HP. Uh, and increases heal your Maelstrom increases your healing. Unfortunately, it drains your mail so really quick and never puts out enough healing to be useful. Never, ever. Your healing is crapola. You will not be self-healing while leveling. You'll be eating, is what I'm going to tell you there. Ancestral Guidance ain't much better, unfortunately. And Windrush Totem, shameful, shameful. It should be baseline. Absolutely. This is Stampeding Roar. Yeah. Which, uh, if you're a raider, you'll know what that means. It's kind of mandatory. How can you not take fucking Stampeding Roar, right? How can you not take it? Yeah, fucking pain in the ass. Stop being with a two-minute cooldown. Ugh, please put this baseline and come up with something else here. Healing Rain would be nice. I would love to have Healing Rain back. That would be fucking cool. But no. Usual totems here. Lightning Surge, Earth Grab, and Voodoo Totem. Voodoo Totem, if you've not seen it, is literally uh, the CC totem. But it, it hexes things. That's all it does. It hexes things. Looks like this. Very cool. 
Very nice, right? Uh, what it'll do is it'll just hex things, but it will only do it once, and obviously those hexes can be broken by damage or whatever. Lightning Surge Totem is far more useful, uh, far, far more useful, especially for five mans and stuff. Uh, so, level 60 then, we start getting back to the interesting choices. As I told you earlier, once you get Path of Flame and get a, f a few Flame Shocks rocking, your Lava Surges go through the roof and you become a turret. You're going to need Echo the Elements at that point, and I mean need it. You are going to get so many, so, so many... Uh, lava Surge procs that you need the three charges. In some cases, guys, you cannot get below three, is what I'm telling you. You can't get below three. It's fucking insane once this thing starts going off. So if I do even put a couple of flame shocks up, even at two targets, this thing starts to take off. Hopefully, it won't let me down now. The proc chance won't go absolutely dog shit. I'm already back to three charges. Tried to get rid of them. You can, do you see what I'm talking about? <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Now, I have no doubt at some point they may actually drop this proc chance, although I'm talented into it, but... Yeah, you, this is what you become, is this fucking mobile turret of justice. Of fiery justice, to say the least. And then, finally, I can cast the lightning bolt. It's absolute lunacy, especially when you get... I mean, that's two targets. You imagine it with three, four targets. It gets absolutely crazy. So, at that point, you want to have Echo the Elements. It really plays into that playstyle if you want to play a fire-based playstyle. Or you are going to do some... Not scumming. I'm going to call it scumming because that's kind of the nickname for it. Uh, flame Shock spreading in order to burst down one target. Just think of it similar to how, like, a Warlock would drop, like, Agonies on other targets just to get procs. Yeah, if I'm to get extra soul shards. I'm not trying to DPS those targets. I don't give a shit about this guy's DPS. I want to kill this guy. But that flame shot is going to allow me to really tunnel into this guy so much more. Well worth. Uh, Ancestral Swiftness. Awesome for doing consistent AoE. So you would go with a setup here like Total Mastery and Ancestral Swiftness. Haste by 10%. Uh, just allows you to do a lot more Chain Lightnings and stuff. Very cool. Elemental Blast. Um, Elemental Blast doesn't even seem to fit anymore. Honestly, it's, I would say that they're trying to make this the single target spell, so you have something extra to do during a single target. I will say that the animation on it is, f and the sound effect is fucking cool. Let's listen to this. It's just so nice and meaty, and it hits really fucking hard. Still gives you the same buff as it classically did. It just doesn't feel like it fits anymore. There's a lot more fun to be had here and buffs to manage that having elemental blast just as another cooldown it feels like total mastery almost i'm not against it though it's not like the end of the world this thing i'm not like going oh elemental blast dog shit it just doesn't seem to fit anymore uh with the current play style of ellie it doesn't seem to work elemental fusion plays well into this setup that we have here with uh, path of flame and echo the elements it just gives a 10 percent chance for lava surge not the most interesting but it offers that extra gameplay where you're more of a turret if you like that style of play primal elemental is just to buff your elementals your fire or your storm ellie and magnitude. So if you are going to be doing a shitload of AoE, you would go with magnitude because you're going to be doing a lot of earthquake. It also means you're probably not going to do a lot of fire damage because you're going to be doing a lot of chain lightnings, which means you then go with a talent setup like this for huge amounts of AoE. We've got total mastery giving us all the haste and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we've got haste. We've got increased chances for lightning bolt and maelstrom to work. We've got ancestral swiftness more haste. You would go with something like this and you would be doing a lot of earthquakes. This is, again... So to point out, this is fire damage. Your earthquake get, now spews magma. Magma uh, from the ground. So you get more fire damage. Then we move down to another one, which also plays. There's so much synergy and room to maneuver. I hope you're starting to get the idea that Elemental has a lot of choice in how you want to play it. So even if you're not bleeding edge or want to be mathematically the best, if there's a style of play you enjoy here, you can go for it. If you prefer lightning bolt and cast times and all that kind of stuff, you can go for that. If you prefer instant casts and having all that work, you can do that as well. If you like big dick AoE, you can do that as well. If you like a lot of single target focus, you can do that as well. If you like a lot of cleave damage, you can do that as well. It's so much choice here. So what do we get? We get Aftershock. Your shock spells refund 25% of all Maelstrom spent on them. Really cool if you're dumping a lot of Earth Shocks. And then you can also run into the mo momentum where you dump an Earth Shock and then instantly do a full duration Flame Shock after it. Re works really nicely in the muscle memory, that one. Storm Ellie is just a, a different type of Elemental with a 5 minute cooldown. Is it fun? No. Uh, it's not fun at all. Replaces your Fire Elemental. Pfft, hills Gusts of Wind instead of Fireballs. Whatever. Uh, lightning Rod. So Lightning Rod's interesting. If you're going to be doing a lot of Lightning Damage and or... Cleave, as we talked about earlier, Lightning Rod is really cool. Now, this is why a lot of the extra bonus damage you get is fire, mainly because of Lightning Rod. So, Lightning Rod is debuff, okay? It can proc off anything. If you chain Lightning, it doesn't mean it's going to proc off your main target. It can proc everywhere. Uh, so, let's see if we can get one to proc. What you'll notice is a debuff will appear. Come on. Show me the Lightning Rod, please. It's, you can see some slight inconsistencies with Lightning Rod. Come on, baby. Do it for me. Do it for daddy. 
Ugh. What a drag. This is why I tend not to play with Lightning Rod, unless I'm doing, like, shitloads of Chain Lightnings. I've put about 16, 17 hours into this now. There we go. There's Lightning Rod. So, casting attacks deal 20% damage. Notice that there's lightning cracking from the fucking sky. How awesome is that? All it's doing is duplicating 20% of the nature damage you do to the target that has Lightning Rod onto other nearby targets. That's all Lightning Rod does. I will say that once the debuff is up, it tends to stay up. Doesn't fall off for very long, but it has done there. In general play, that's not the way it really works in the real world. Especially if you're chain lightning in and that's hitting five targets. Each of them can prop lightning rod and then they duplicate it. You literally are Thor at that point. There is quite literally just fucking lightning crashing from the skies constantly, guys. It's so cool. Uh, for what is in, in essence not a very interesting spell, right? When it kicks off, you know there's an elemental shaman around. Because everything is just being electrocuted to fuck it's so cool love lightning rod and it pairs up well if you're going for like total mastery ancestral swiftness magnitude and lightning rod if you're going for this pure sort of chain lightning earthquake setup you, there's you are creating thunderstorms literal thunderstorms it's so cool on to the bad part then the level 100 talents two out of three are fucking shocking liquid magmatome has no place in this setup anymore unfortunately it's i get they're trying to hold on to something here but liquid magma just I think they've even changed the animation on it. It doesn't even seem anything like it used to. Yeah, it just seems so pussy now. Ugh. 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 It does not a lot of damage. If it, Even if it did damage, it's just a fire and forget ability. It's a one minute cooldown. You're doing far more interesting things. And this is the problem with it, why it doesn't fit. Similar to Elemental Blast... The Elemental Shaman has far more interesting things to be doing that aren't just fire and forget things like this. Like, Stormkeeper is on the same cooldown, but it's way more interesting. I could build up to that. I could get good usage out of it. I could line it up with procs and stuff. It's very cool. This is just a fire and forget whatever type of deal. Yeah, the same as Elemental Blast. Just keep it on cooldown. Is it interesting? No. No, not really. Uh, in the current state of Ellie. Previously, absolutely. Previously, in, in Wad, yeah, I would say Liquid Magma Totem is interesting. I would probably say Elemental Blast is interesting as well. Now it isn't because the playstyle is so varied and interesting on its base merits that it's not. Ascendance. Ascendance has no place here anymore. I could turn myself into an instant cast lava burst monster with a couple of talent choices all the time if I want to. Yeah, I demonstrated that earlier and I'll demonstrate even more in the dungeon. So Ascendance just doesn't fit. It's not fun. It's not interesting. That's just the end of the story with it. What I would love is that the form remain in some manner. Perhaps if you got so many back-to-back -back lava surges or whatever that you turned into the Ascendance model. Didn't do anything, but you turn into it. That'd be quite cool. And similar with Nature. So you could get the blue one, uh, you know, the blue version or the fire version. Ascendance still does what it does in Wad, but the Elemental Shaman doesn't do what it did in Wad. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it just doesn't fit. Spamming Lava Burst... Ain't a big deal anymore. I can tell up to have that happen all the time if I want to. Uh, it's, you know, it's very different from the Fire Mage that has that thrust upon them. I have a whole array, a literal full-on matrix of playstyles at my disposal as an Elemental Shaman now. And Ascendance just doesn't fit. Neither does Liquid Magma Totem. And Elemental Blast to a lesser extent doesn't fit either. However, Ice Fury. So, obviously, you could probably tell. As an Elemental Shaman, you should probably have some... Uh, some involvement with all the elements, right? So air, not really. Fire, yes, right? Nature, yeah, that's in there. What are we going to do for frost, they said? All we have is frost shock for water, and we have uh, healing surge for water. That's about it. So what are we going to do? We came up with Ice Fury. Now, Ice Fury on its merits doesn't sound that interesting. It hurls a frigid ice at the target, an icicle, dealing some frost damage, and causing your next four frost shocks to deal 400% increased damage. What? Frost shock? Part of the rotation? But I'm already doing so much other shit. How does this work? So, this is one of the best movement abilities ever. So good. Uh, and uh, luckily, I did Blackrock Hold as the dungeon, so you can see, you see it kind of in action. It kind of didn't pair out perfectly, but <laughs> that's just the way it, it goes sometimes. Um, so how do you use this thing? Basically, if you know you're about to move, yeah? If you know you're going to be moving in the next few seconds, you can buy four global cooldowns worth of free movement at no cost. So what you would do is you would bank, you would be DPSing as normal, like, la 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 la, I'm doing DPS, I'm a great elemental shaman. And you're like, oh shit, alright, in a few seconds, boss or whatever is going to do something that's going to make me move. That sucks, I don't want to lose DPS for moving, so alright, so let me fire off my Ice Fury. 
Now I can move around without issue with four global cooldowns minimum to do big dick deeps as I move. Not to mention refreshing flame shock and any lava surge procs I might have along the way. Ah, now it makes total sense. And this thing is fucking cool for those moments. It forces you, not only that, to learn what the boss is casting. Yeah? What is the boss doing? Does this involve movement? Cool. As long as I know two seconds beforehand, or 1.5 seconds in the case of Ice Fury in my current build, I can plan for that. It makes total sense. All I need to do is have a little bit of Maelstrom. So I know it's coming. I'm not going to Earthshot my net Maelstrom. Started to move. Cool. Ice Fury. Go. And you get all this shit to do on the move. It's awesome. Look how far... If you can't get to where you need to be, most environments in four global cooldowns, potentially five, six, or even seven if you get some procs, you've got a fucking long way to travel and you're not going to... You will be suffering the absolute least in that scenario, right? You understand what I'm saying? It's a great little ability. It really make And it's far more interesting than Ascendance or Liquid Magma Tome because I have to think about how to use it. It helps my gameplay. It helps increase my DPS. It's awesome. It's really cool. I like Ice Fury. I'm a big fan of stuff like this that can be used to maximum effect in the right scenarios. So, I've shown you a lot there. I've shown you a lot. Now, unfortunately, I can't do the dungeon on the level 110. They've banned me from doing that. Well, they haven't banned me, but it's not available. I just can't queue for it. So, I won't be able to show you Power of the Maelstrom in action. But I, what I will show you is just huge deeps and generally a funny dungeon where there's just chaos going on in the alpha forums right now with people just not wanting to test anything. Uh, so, let's go and do that, shall we? Okay, if you don't want any spoilers, this thing's a lot of fun, man. A hell of a lot of fun. I'll see you again if you're leaving us. If you're not, come along. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for sticking with me as we head into the Black Rook Hold. Sound is activated. I just accidentally popped Bloodlust, which is all good. And what I'm hoping to do today with you guys is actually demonstrate the multiple playtimes. One second. Uh, to showcase the multiple talent setups that you can actually have with your enhanced uh, Elemental Shaman. And this is the eighth dungeon I've done on the Elemental Shaman, I shit you not. It's been a hell of an experience, to say the least, to try and get this footage out for you guys. But hopefully we can actually do that today, and this dungeon will not just end abruptly. A lot of people are farming the first boss in here, which is making it a little difficult, so hopefully this group isn't going to do that. That would be the ideal, if I'm being honest with you, but we'll see, we'll see. Now, we've got a really awkward pull here, so hopefully I can just interrupt this one and bring these in, and that would be nice. So my chain lightning is actually doing something. Excellent. Okay. So what are the multiple playstyles I want to show for you guys? Well, I want to show you um, the fire-based playstyle, which is really, really cool. It's one of my favorite ones, and it's a very, very different style of play than you'll see with, like, um, a fire mage or something along those lines, because lava burst works differently. But also... It's super mobile, like crazy, crazy mobile, uh, once you actually get it going, and that's something I personally enjoy. Now, I want to make a note of something as we kind of get settled in here, is that whether or not each talent setup is perfect for a certain amount of mobs is debatable. And I certainly can't tell you whether or not this is how it will be at the end of Legion, when it actually goes live. So certain things like, should we be chain lightning in at two, three mobs, or four, five minimum, or whatever that is. I honestly have no idea. I really don't know. So the setup I'm showing you right now is not ideal for this scenario, which <laughs> sucks. So I'm using a very nature-based setup, which involves the talents Lightning Rod. Okay, so what you'll see in a moment is it's actually procced on one of the mobs, but not procced on here. Is we'll see it hopefully in a second once I actually get some nature spells there. You can see the Lightning Rod is procced there. So when I chain Lightning now, you see this lightning shooting down from the sky. That's Lightning Rod, and that's what Lightning Rod does. And it's very cool, and it gives a lot of damage. Now, it's only based on nature damage, so your Lava Burst and stuff don't do anything. That's also true of Magnitude, which buffs your Earthquake, but it buffs it with fire damage, all right? It's going to be erupting magma. And the whole purpose of adding extra fire damage to the spec is purely to prevent you from abusing Lightning Rod, and Lightning Rod being, like, uncontrollable amounts of damage. It's just an aid to your natural cleave. That's all it's supposed to be, is an aid to Chain Lightning. I am taking Path of Flame. Why? Realistically speaking, in fact, I'm going to swap it in a second. Realistically speaking, when we get to this scenario where we're playing around with like AoE and you're doing a lot of earthquakes and lightning rods, which we should be doing on the next pack, you want Totem Mastery. Earthen Rage doesn't benefit lightning rod in any way because it's fire damage. So we'll take Totem Mastery. Now, the problem I have with Totem Mastery is pretty much this in a nutshell. I just dislike it. 
it's really boring. You press it, and if you if you don't press it immediately off cooldown, as I said in the first half of the video, then it's just a wasted talent, and it really fucking sucks. It's like I get the idea that they wanted the flavor of totems to be exist. Uh, but this is just the worst way of possibly handling it ever. So this is going to be a five-person pull, which means we're going to be doing true AoE. Hopefully. Uh, we're also going to show off our Stormkeeper. Now, as I can't play the... I am level 110 in here. But the this is a PvE character. It's actual level is about 105, I think. Um, the problem I have with that is I don't have the artifacts. Are we skipping? Oh, that's a bummer. Oh, well, it's not that bad, actually. Uh-oh. Did I ninja pull? Oops. Oops. That's actually beneficial. I want to show you this. <laughs> I want to show you this. I didn't intend to do that, though. Right, so. This is what our AOE will ordinarily look like. Is getting our chain lightning on. And this is exactly what you know of from what. However, once we raise our fist into the fucking sky. I got a storm call. And look what happens here. And it adds so much goddamn weight. So much goddamn weight to what is usually a very mundane aspects of elemental shaman is the sustained aoe i know a lot of guys really like it and i'm not saying it's uh, inherently bad or anything like that but this one extra spell every one minute adds so much beef to it and i really do wish that i had the uh 110 artifacts out to really mock it up but you can see i have three earthquakes ticking right now and it's just it's so much more interesting than what it's such a slight difference but god it's more interesting and you can just see that the damage goes absolutely through the fucking window when you get doing this. It's, it just feels fun. I mean, I never really had a problem with Chain Lightning Spam. It got old eventually, which is why I probably wouldn't main like uh, an Elemental Shaman on live. But in Legion, you have these extra moments of just... Even this, which is beefy in of itself, just turns itself up to maximum. And it's so fucking cool. I'm getting all the glaive tosses, which is fine. So, as we come to the end of this, I have uh, my cooldowns back again, like Storm Collars back again, but I actually want to save them. We're now getting down to a couple of other mobs. Uh, you see, I forgot about Total Mastery again. I knew, I, I always forget about it. I just, and it's not because of anything other than I find it so uninteresting that I forget that I even have it. And that's the general feeling I've gotten after like 16 hours of gameplay on here with Totem Mastery is I would bind it. What I would do on live is I would simply apply a tell me when to it and just call it a day. I'd be like, okay, if I have to take this thing, then I'll just apply a tell me when to it. It's very similar to Searing Totem, yeah? Is you would just apply it and you just do it. But it does, it, like even with Searing Totem, you can see if you're missing the animation and you're missing procs and stuff. With this, you just don't. You just, you either have the buff or you don't. You see, it's buff now. Did anything change for me really? Did I notice the lack of buffs? No, no, I didn't. So, I don't want to use it because I want to respec in a second. So, I'm going to wait. Now, single target. Now, we're actually coming up to a boss with a lot of movement. So, I'm going to take Ice Fury. I'm sure many of you are interested in that. I'm going to take Echo the Elements as well. I'm going to take uh, Elemental Fusion. This gives us more Lava Burst charges. charges. Again, more movement. Uh, we're going single target. So, we'll take Earthen Rage. And we're going to take Aftershock. Because, obviously, Lightning Rod's an AoE-based ability. So, this is the talent setup I would choose for this boss. If I didn't have Heavy Movement, I would take Elemental Blast or Ancestral Swiftness. I believe there's no little difference. If I didn't have much movement, I would probably take Ascendance. Although, I'm, about, I'm going to show you later on. That it's such a, a little difference to this. So let's get our pull ready and we're going to have some good fun on this. Hopefully, we can do some good stuff. I have an unused trinket that I actually got from here. Although, I'm pretty sure it's not working. So we'll see. So in there, fire elemental going. Get the first lava burst going. Boom. Now, what we're watching for is the boss is going to cast something. Uh, it's not swirling sight. It's a different spell. And when he casts this spell... It causes soul echoes. There it is. So he's cast soul echoes. So what we do is we cast our ice fury at that point, and we see if that soul echoes lands on us. If that soul echoes lands on us, we have to start running around. So the way you use ice fury is you go, oh shit, I have to move in a second, or perhaps the boss is going to cast something like soul echoes on you, and you're gonna have to move. If that's the case, what you can do is prepare for that by casting an ice fury, and that gives you like so many global cooldowns to move around. Such a cool spell, and it's such a short cast. So there's Sol Echoes. I don't quite have the ability now, so hopefully I don't get it. Yeah, it's just about to come off cooldown there. So it doesn't line up perfectly for this one boss in particular, right? Doesn't mean there's anything inherently wrong with it, but <laughs> there you go. That's the idea. You can see the effect there that we would try and counter by buying ourselves all those global cooldowns. And also in that time, there's a high chance that we would have Lava Burst resets go along with that. Oh, please don't turn that thing towards me, bro. I would really appreciate that. Now, you're probably saying, Preacher, heal yourself. Uh, I would, but... <laughs> Honestly, it's not good. So there it was. He casted Soul Echoes again. It wasn't on us. That's fine. So we're going to use these Frost Shock Charges. Get rid of them. So we have our Storm Collar back. 
Use that unused trinket. You can see that effect on the floor. Does it give me a buff now? No, it says zero, so I don't think it does anything. <laughs> Which is fine. It's not a big deal. I'll probably replace it after this if I have a trinket still in my bags. So we're probably going to get a soul echo soon. Still six... Yeah, there it is. Six seconds left on that. That wasn't on me again. I'm getting really lucky here. Like, stupidly lucky, which is fine in my book. So, what you can probably also tell, then, is on a boss, our single target playstyle, not that dissimilar from what? It really is not that dissimilar from what at all. The basic fundamentals remain the same. Now, we can change this again. So, I'm going to switch this setup to almost an entirely nature-based setup uh, for the next boss, which should give you some idea. Uh, there's Soul Echo, so let's cast an Ice Fury off the back of that. Wasn't on me. That's fine. Is on that guy. I've got so lucky with this. This would never happen in an ordinary raid environment. Let's dump these frost shocks. You have to uh, spend some good uh, maelstroms. I'll generate some good maelstroms to get the use out of it. That's fine. We got stormcaller coming back. That's fine. We got uh, a DPS dead, so that's the only reason there. That's that's taking a while. Stormcaller to get big chunky lightning bolts. So you can see they're hitting for like 407k. They really are the meaty of meaty. Oh, my ice fury was on cooldown. I was like, I'm bound to get soul echoes this time, but I didn't, so it's all good. It's all good. So, if you were worried, I said there's a lot of buff maintenance and stuff, right? There's a lot of buff maintenance, but it all makes sense. It's not overbearing at all. Lightning Rod isn't something you have to, like, have control over or anything like that. And therefore, it all fits into a very nice, neat little package that you would expect uh, from your Wallace of Draenor Elemental Shaman. But, the great advantage is... Excuse me. Soul Echoes. Cast the Ice Fury. Yep, now it's on me. Cool. Now we got all these global cooldowns. Fire off a lava burst in the middle. See if we can get another proc. To run around with. And therefore, I actually stopped DPS for like two seconds there. Do you see how good that is? Isn't that fantastic? It's so fucking cool. It really is so fucking cool. Absolutely very impressed. Ooh, I got an artifact thing. Nice. That is so cool. Lovely ability. Really like it. Really a big fan. So I'm happy with that. So let's go back to an AoE. Mm, someone left the group. Was it the tank? No, it was the healer. Uh, I'm not sure what it is. I don't know whether people are farming for artifact power or whatever, but in Blackrock Hold specifically, people are leaving the dungeon after the first boss. I've, I've run into several groups that are just leaving after the first boss. Uh, so we'll go back to this setup. I will take Total Mastery. Just for a couple more packs so you can kind of see it in action. But again, it's seeing it in action is kind of a stupid thing to say. It does nothing. It's just passive buffs. Uh, not that exciting whatsoever. So we'll move up to here. If we don't get a healer relatively quickly, I'll uh, I'll just pause the video and then I'll skip straight to be getting the guys. So we'll hang on for a couple of seconds. The spec I'm really excited about, and I'm excited about it because it's my personal favorite, and I think that's a great thing to say. I can't say that about many specs in Legion, is that there's talent setups that I really, truly enjoy, and there's talent setups that I absolutely don't mind and enjoy them as well, uh, is the heavy fire setup. The heavy fire setup that I'm going to show you uh, in a little while here is designed in purposely uh, for like two to three target, but with single target focus. Does that make sense to you guys? It's just about spreading your flame shock via path of flame. Uh, not that you have to do that, but it makes sense to do that. And taking elemental fusion with the extra lava surges and echo the elements. Once you get to like three or four targets that have flame shock on, you almost never hard cast lava burst and you almost cannot get it down to uh, below three charges. I'm honestly hoping to show that in its true form and hopefully the procs are going to bless us RNG Jesus style uh, because it's so cool when it goes off. You just become this fucking turret of mobility and I know so many elemental shamans were looking at the loss of Spirit Walker's Grace and stuff and thinking mobility is a problem. Hopefully I've just demonstrated that it's not a problem because of Ice Fury at all. I mean, that's a long... That debuff is really fucking long and you can still just do full, pretty much full DPS on the move. And you mix it in with proxy stuff. It's really awesome. So I'm really hoping to demonstrate that for you soon. Now, let's see if I can replace this trinket. I don't want to get people to get annoyed saying, you've got to change your trinket, and you didn't. Uh, a whole variety of shit here. What's this? Fucking int versatility? Yeah, whatever. We'll take that thing. That looks fucking fun. Woo! That looks like a, a big a big funsies. Right, I'm going to skip until the healer joins, all right? So we'll be back in a couple of moments. Welcome back, everybody. Apologies that I am a little bit further into the dungeon. Uh, nothing untoward happened. I was just uh, taken up by some important calls that I had to take, which was a really misform, mis uh, really unfortunate timing, uh, to say the least. But it's fine. We're back here. And we are about to do some big AoE, which will kind of bring us to the end of me having to sort of play around with um, our, little, our little totem mastery and all that kind of shit. And hopefully we can put to, put to rest any thoughts that... 
Our AoE is different. Watch this. Stormkeeper, raise your fist to the fucking sky. Boom. <laughs> Isn't that fucking awesome? God, it makes it so much more fun. I mean, it's still the same old chain lightning spot, but that little bit extra just makes it so much better. I need to jump all the fuck four earthquakes ticking at once. Yeah, baby. Fucking, how do you like me now, man? <laughs> Get elemental shaman. Ah, oh, it's good. It's so good. I just, you know what I want you guys to listen to for a second? The sound effects. Let me just turn this shit up. Isn't that cool? Just isn't that cool? Just, you feel like you are the god of electricity. I feel like I'm Raiden. Or Raiden, I should say. Raiden, fucking Metal Gear. Uh, you feel like you're Raiden, the god of thunder. You feel like you're Big Trouble in Little China. That's what it's all about, man. Not the Rocks version. The fucking classic Hurt Muscle version. I have a blast with this every time. Every single goddamn time. So, I'm going to be switching the specs shortly. Interrupt that so we can hopefully get a death ball. Oh. Uh oh I want to get a death ball. Ooh, this positioning sucks. It really sucks. I see you want me to kill that. I just don't want to, but I will, I guess. Let's put down a magma totem in the middle there so it could do something. I guess. Shh. I don't care. <laughs> magma totem fucking sucks now. It's not fun. I'm actually going to save my Stormcaller for the next pack, which is like the sneaky pack. See if we can... Uh, this is going to annoy the warrior, but... Uh. <laughs> That was some missed time. <laughs> I was trying to hit it over to here without annoying the warrior too much, but um, didn't quite land it. Let's see if we can get inside the earthquake. Let's put a flame shock on him just for a little add extra. Yeah, we're going to come to the end here of our sort of AoE splurge fest. And I'm going to switch it over to my preferred style of AoE, which is a fire-based one. Woo, ow. A much more fire-based AoE. Which I much prefer. I think it's so much cooler than this. I mean, I don't mind this. and It certainly has the weight to it, especially with the Stormcaller. It's fine. If I had to do this, I would be more than happy with it. Let's get a little out of hand. Let's drop our Stun Totem. See if we get a little AoE stun. We're probably... Oh, no, they're immune. Never mind. Oof. Ow. Let's reincarnate. Let's keep this fucking shit going. Get out of the way of that arrow fire, though. Not good. Arrow fire, not good. We still got a healer. Healer and me. Yeah, I got this. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, I can't hex that. That's unfortunate. Give it another interrupt. Our stun totem still has a while to go yet. We're fine. Let's finish this guy off. We'll put a flame shock on this so we get some more procs. And finish this off. Now, the problem is, of course, we're about to get zerged by mobs from the side. So, hex at the ready, boys. Yeah, here they come. Can't hex them. Oh, well. This is going to be fine. This is fine. All right. Let's get our storm caller going. Let's fuck this show up. Go! 200,000 and everything. I mean, it's just two It's just two chain lines, but you can imagine it. You can fucking imagine it once you've got the... Uh, what's it called? No, at least fucking it is. Power of the Maelstrom procs for that, so it's procking definitely, like, 100% procking at, like, mastery all over the place. Let's get our lava elemental totem down. Magma Totem, I should say. <laughs> it's so meaty. Earthquake after earthquake. Get earthquakes on, son. I'm still trying. We got a boss, like, immediately after here, so I would use longer cooldowns, but I really don't want to. I want to respect for the boss. And hopefully, maybe I can show you a little bit of flame damage there. What I'm not doing, as I'm sure you're aware by now, is using, like, the ideal... Forgot the totems again. Fucking terrible spell, man. I wish it had some effect on gameplay, so it was, which would, like, make it more interesting. Than just a, pro a button you press every 30 seconds. Um, what I, I'm i obviously not do using a talent set, which is ideal for all scenarios. I'm not doing that. Why am I not doing that? I want to showcase the talents so you guys can make your decisions of whether you like these various playstyles. Is there a playstyle that appeals to you personally? That kind of thing is something you'll have to decide for yourself. So the best I can do is just showcase all the different ones. And then you can kind of see what's going on. So this is going to be the sort of ending... Of our um, nature-based splurge AOE chain lightning fest that you'll all know and love from what I think it's a good place to start. Let's go single target on this guy. <laughs> this is kind of hinting at what's coming up when you see all those lava burst charges. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so good. 
I don't know what it is, but when I go, like, for the pure Firebase and uh, not the mixed version, which you can also do, which is just, listen to what I'm saying, different versions of DPS, all playing by the same rules, all playing by exactly the same basic fundamental elemental shaman rules, but plays so differently. Uh, so let's switch it up. So we got kind of a single target. So we'll take Ascendants because we kind of have to. Let's do Storm Elemental for this. So we'll take Primal Elementalist. Uh, we'll take Echo the Elements. We'll take Path of Flame. No, I'm going to do that because there's... In fact, no, I'll take Earth and Rage. I just feel like a bad guy when I take talents that are really shitty <laughs> for what we're about to do. So we'll take Elemental Blast. Why the hell not? Uh, we'll take Elemental Blast. Get this out of the way, showing off this off. This is exactly what I wanted to show you. Prime Elementalist does work with Storm Elemental, though, if you weren't sure. What's that we're waiting for? Is you just, this is your first time here, huh? Hmm, interesting. That's good to know. This way, there you go. Uh, I'm not pushing ahead. There used to be two mobs on here, I think. There's either that... Or, yeah, there we go. <laughs> I, was, I was pretty sure. Oh, we missed it. Hey oh Don't mind me. Elemental Blast! Do love the sound effect. We lost the healer again? Oh, come on! This will be our third healer, I think? Or fourth? Oh, instant rejoin. Cool. Wow, that would have fucking sucked. I'm not even sure why we're losing this many healers, but there you go. So weird. I just don't know what's happening on the alpha right now. And it's uh, it's a little irritating, honestly. Like I said, this is the eighth dungeon I've done. And you might think, well, that's like maybe a day's worth of effort, really, to get through eight dungeons. No, that's like three or four days. The queues for the DPS on the alpha are absolutely huge, guys. Like an hour plus. Uh-oh. Tank died. Go away. Now, I can just show you now how bad, uh, or good, if you want to say that. Arrow Barrage. Ah. Uh, Earth Elemental is. It's fucking useless. Absolute kibosh bad. Get a Frost Shock. Hide around a corner. Worst heal of all time. There it is. Uh, Arrow Barrage. Can I make it? Oh, I was so close. I was so close. So, we lost yet another healer. Oh, at least I can get out where I say, because the healer's already here. So, what I was saying is, the different playstyles are pretty good. The ones where the Elemental Shaman does fall down on, and I might as well get this out of the way now, are the stuff that is, like, part of the traditional Elemental Shaman build. So, things like Ascendance, they just don't make any sense anymore, and I'm really going to highlight that for you soon. It just doesn't make sense. Elemental Blast should probably be baseline at this point. Um, although, having said that... Uh, elemental blast feels like it's a good part of an elemental shaman's toolkit right it gives that 12 second cooldown to something that doesn't have anything really like that i mean lava burst is eight seconds but the chances of you waiting that eight seconds are so fucking small uh another man down is that, that a healer again no <laughs> legion alpha the dungeon nightmare is very real right now uh the same with liquid magma taught me it just doesn't seem to fit oh fucking hell really oh god damn it let me kill this thing. Hopefully then we can get going. They just don't seem to fit anymore. They fit the old style of play just fine. There was nothing wrong with them. In, you know, there's nothing inherently wrong with these but with these spells. They just don't seem to fit anymore. They don't seem to have a home in this style of play. The Maelstrom style of play. And I want to point something out that I've not mentioned at all, which I would ordinarily be probably chirping about. The, um... Go over there. <laughs> Not till for the prop warrior. That's funny. <laughs> that is funny. Uh, I haven't mentioned once flame shock. It's not a thing anymore. They've absolutely cured that. Absolutely cured any and all things about flame shock that you, any and all worries that you previously had. Let's get rid of this. Where arrow barrages everyone to death. You can see there, those guys are dying. They have completely cured that with the maelstrom system. It's fine now. It's not a thing you need to worry about whatsoever. And I think that's something they'll be like so thankful about because it was such a burden for so long and honestly i don't even think about it anymore i really don't think about it i refresh flame shot when i need to it do it lasts long enough that it's not a fucking hassle it's absolutely fine absolutely fine i think that's something we could all be grateful for right i'm, I'm trying to save my cooldowns because we have a boss coming and you guys are making it really hard to do that get out of here okay so we're going to take this for this boss so i can show you storm elemental it replaces your fire ellie as you probably noticed it's fine and dandy. Uh, nothing to worry, worry about. But it, this is like this is like the single target build. Yeah. 
uh, that you can take, and it's a mix of nature and fire. Is this is this? I would call this the mixed build. It's all right. It, this feels this plays almost exactly like an elemental shaman in one. This is about as close as you're gonna get to a straight up elemental shaman in one, along with the animations and graphics, all to go along with it. Everything you know and love. So if you love, absolutely love the Wad Ellie shaman. This is the setup for you. And that big AoE, which is magnitude and lightning run and stuff, plays pretty much exactly as the Wad Elemental Shaman should. Now, is that a bad thing? No, not at all. I am really not a guy who's like, we should change things because it's new. New expansion, it should change. No, it shouldn't. Uh, they've had many years to try and get where they want to be with the Elemental Shaman. And uh, they're reasonably happy with it. And honestly, the Elemental Shaman was, is a fun spec. It's a shame it never had as much representation uh, in WAD as it probably would have liked to have had, mainly because of the Flame Shock stuff. And that's cured now. And on top of that, they've done some really cool stuff in here. Now, whether or not that's going to, by the end of Legion, and all the numbers are worked out and whatever, whether or not that genuinely means that some of this stuff just doesn't work. Like, some of the builds just don't work out uh, compared to just the flat-out boring ones. It's highly possible when the numbers are done. If that happens, it'll be a little bit sad, and hopefully they could tweak the talents so you can pick it. you got to remember, Blizzard's aim with the talents, and it's an aim, not saying it's always going to work, the aim with the talents is that you can pick the build you like. Obviously, some favor AoE, some favor single target, and that is generally how they're doing it, so you shouldn't need a guide and stuff as to what talents to pick. Um, that works out really well, right now without knowing like specific numbers and stuff so we'll see what happens here so the way i like to start this usually is getting my lightning bolt going with the three uh with the storm caller then putting up this my elemental blast and then popping ascendance now oh he's doing it at me what a dick let's move to this guy so it's a really small one That's generally the idea with Dark Rush, just try and make it as small as possible. Now, one thing I'll say, this is why Ascendance doesn't really fit anymore. One, you can't help but fill your Maelstrom bar while you do it. You just can't help it. It's just a natural part of the, the system. Right, Storm Ellie, go. As far as I know, Storm Ellie's aren't snapshotting, so they're not a big deal. Just get him going, get him doing his job. Fire that off, Elemental Blast. Isn't this exactly as you would see it in Ward on a boss? Yeah, of course it is. This is absolutely as you would see it. Now, what we've got here is obviously a couple of tags. So, we'll refresh the flame shock on there for a full duration. Switch over to the new target. And how can you... Is there better target switching than what you just saw? No! This is great! Oh, really? You aimed that into the middle of the room? I should have seen that coming from the animation. My bad. All right, let's storm caller. Storm keeper, I should say. Fire off that lava burst in the middle. Get rid of the earth shock. Try and work on this out a little bit. Refresh the flame shocks. One on you, one on you. Keep it going. If you love the the what? Uh, Ellie Shaman, this is fine, right? This is absolutely cool. There's no problem here whatsoever. Everything you know and love is here, and the problems with it have been uh, cured. Happy, happy fucking day, as far as I'm concerned. Right, I'm going to switch over to here, put as much deeps into the boss as we can. Whoa! Oh, it took off. It's, it fucking ignited the fire, brother. Yeah, as the fire rises! Yes, it does. Oh, you see, that's the difference. That's the difference. When it has those moments, and we're going to have a lot of those moments in a minute. But you spec into it. You choose to have that experience. It's not forced upon you in any way. That experience of just where you go full turret mode is absolutely not forced upon you. Love the uh, elemental blast effect. Oh, motherfucker. God damn. Damn. How did he do that? No one was even outside, I don't think. That was really weird. She reset. Yeah, she did. <laughs> yeah, she did. So no Storm Ellie. We can't respec out of it because it's a five-minute cooldown. That's why I'm getting it out of the way now. Uh, my bad. Made her charge the door. Eh, I don't think it was your fault. You were still inside the room. She shouldn't have uh, left the room. Bug report to be sent later. Write it down. Okay, there. Oh, shit. All right, elemental blast on. Get the storm keeper going. Bzzz. Oh, 430k. 430k. Dark rush to me. Where's the other one? It's there. Okay. Oh, that's a lovely patch. I'll take that. I'll take that. Let's put some haste on this bitch. We got our ascendance back, but I'll save it for the ad at this point, I guess. Get her out of that phase quicker. Why not? 
Just for the sake of it. That's the thing with Ascendance. It's like... I have so many moments where I just don't need to do anything. I, I, I just don't need the... The Ascendance just aspect just isn't that interesting. Oh, I moved a little bit too early there. Rookie me. She had like a delay. So, let's get some Maelstrom. She's got a full Flame Shock on her now. Ascendance! Die! This isn't that exciting. Can you see what I'm saying? It's not that exciting because I get this same experience in many, many other areas of just naturally playing the Elemental Shaman. And off often in a more fun and interesting way. Which is kind of why it just it feels lackluster. Oh, Stormkeeper. I fucking love that animation. It's so good. And the fact that the buff lasts so long, I can't wait to play full time with the artifact weapon and have that extra little thing to manage. I get a feeling some people might be put off by the extra buffs and stuff that uh, an elemental shaman has to sort of be interested in now. But honestly, you shouldn't. As the gameplay remains so similar, these buffs just are literally that. They're buffs and debuffs that you kind of have to be a little bit aware of, but not much. Not much to the point that it's like a cumbersome el get element of gameplay. And I think that's so fucking cool. Woohoo! Get one of those. You like it? Yeah, you like it. You like it in the face, don't you? You filthy bitch. Take it. Uh. I think the thing I'm most impressed with. And it's something they've not been able to achieve on a lot of th characters. Oh, don't fucking run away from me. God damn it. There you go. Is that the talent system seems, and I say seems, truly seems to offer versatility in style of play. You have that absolute versatility, and it's that's the dream. You play as you want to. Now, one thing that does piss me off about this build in particular <laughs> is that you don't get the Maelstrom refund that you get from Aftershock. Like, Storm Elemental really cumbersome to you on that. I'm very, very used to... Um... <laughs> Did it again! I'm very, very used to playing with Aftershock and being able to, like, dump my Earth Shock and then instantly Flame Shock for its full duration. And that is really nice. I've got to be honest with you, that rhythm that you get into with your fingers is so cool. Now, I have Storm Elemental back, and you might be thinking, Preacher, I have Storm Elemental! Uh, the reason I'm not doing is for this, obviously, Legion problem that they need to work on, is that if I do that, it's a five-minute cooldown. And um, that means I won't be able to respect for the trash. And we're obviously going to get a lot of trash. Oh, do you see that? Yeah, it works. Cool. Whoa! hey -oh. Not good. I can kill this boss. No worries. Daddy's got it. Kill the boss. Kill the boss. Kill the boss. Fuck the ad. Kill the boss, kill the boss, kill the boss, boss, boss. There we go. <laughs> if in doubt, just nuke the boss. Is this thing still alive? No way, dude. Alright, this is gonna suck. Oh, man. I'm doing all the deeps. Keep me up. God, cast your stun effect. That means I can move away. Cast it. Cast it. There you go. Thank you. Elemental Shaman God, this is why we wear a shield, boys. Yeah, the talent switching aspect is universal. It's not an Elemental Shaman problem by any means. It's a problem that everybody has. Let me move to here so we can stun this direction. Good job I learned how to tank at some point in my WoW career, right? There we go. It helps in scenarios like this. Oh, you got aggro. Boo! Execute phase warrior. Boo! I was the carry, and you know it. <laughs> I was the carry. You guys all saw. I was the carry. Well, the healer was the carry, I suppose. Right, let me show you a different build, which I fucking love. We're going to take Path of Flame. We're going to take Echo of the Elements. We're going to take Elemental Fusion. We're going to take Aftershock, because we're not going to be doing, like, any nature damage here. Uh, we'll take Liquid Magma, because we really have no other choice, which is the, kind of the great sadness of it. The healer left the group! Lol. <laughs> <laughs> Another healer joins. <laughs> oh, 
Now, in all fairness, if you guys are giggling, there is some raid testing going on right now. It's entirely possible he was called off to raid. It is possible. It is possible. I don't know. Uh, but whatever's going on is really weird. It's so strange that I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's so strange. <sighs> You're number five. <laughs> Healer number five. <laughs> So, this build is the fire build, okay? The fire build basically revolves around getting one big flame shock up for its full duration. We're going to be spreading that with lava burst. That's going to put out a lot of flame shocks. And playing with the fact that lava surge will have 10% more chance to trigger. We'll have three charges via echo the elements. What we're going to become is basically a turret of lava bursts. Like, all the time. And this is why you'll just definitely know that Ascendance fucking just doesn't make any sense anymore. So hopefully I'm going to give this justice. Now, two mobs ain't great for this. I'm not going to lie. It's not the best. Uh, but uh, maybe it'll do. Who knows? Get the idea? <laughs> you get the idea now? <laughs> it looks a little something like that. Uh, basically, when you play this way, it's very, very different to... Uh, I know some people are going to go, Yeah, but you shit on um, a fire mage for playing like this. Because the Fire Mage is, has this forced upon them in one way. And plus, Lava Burst is more interesting than Pyro. Because Py uh, Pyro is a spell you will never hard cast. Which means that in general day-to-day -day elemental shaman gameplay, you're hard casting a lot of Lava Burst. The change in it, fact it happening so frequently and turning up in uh, sheer quantity of it happening is really cool. Oh, that's the wrong target. And the fact that this is naturally like scales so heavily... It scales so, so heavily with the amount of mobs that get flame shocked. I truly, truly hope that this is an absolute viable way to AoE. Now, my prediction, obviously, is that that's not the case. And uh, it really is not. But if it is, that would be cool. Now, you can see here with Aftershock refreshing everything, how cool this becomes. Because you come into... Um, it's a very simple style of play. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and say this is really complicated or anything. You have a lot of leeway with... Um, Having the echo of the elements there for the three charges. But if we get hopefully a decent pull going. What you might see is that it just becomes uncontrollable. And you can't get it below three. I mean, ha any, the, hope, hope, the hope is, the hope in the future is this. And this is why it's different to the fire mage. The fire mage has this all the time. Regardless of whether you want it or not. I am like the ninja pull master today. No, the tank's running ahead of me. I know he is. I keep seeing him. Okay, so we might get something funny happening here, team. Just got to point that out. Throw Earthquake down. Why not? Now, I'm going to try and just Lava Burst. Let's put our lag Magma Totem down. Now, please, do not fail me. And just keep it going. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> I really, really hope this is a viable style of AoE. I genuinely do. I hope it is. Let's dump a lot of this uh, Maelstrom that we're generating here. All right, let's refresh our Flame Shocks. So we get full durations up. Uh oh. Tank down. Now, based on the fact that I don't have aggro right now, it's probably not a viable strategy for AoE. <laughs> Let's get the Earth Ellie going, despite the fact that it does fucking nothing. Attacking me. Not them away. Oh, shit. I did not see them. Let's see if we can finish off the big dude. Oh, tank's up. Move out of the fire. Duh. Got him a big noob sometimes. Oh, Warrior's back. Excellent. Let's do full single target. Ooh. Look at the mobility. You want any convincing? Just look at the mobility you get while doing this. The mobility says everything. And it's a, I, I, I mean, I can gather from there the fact that ordinarily I would be the king of AoE damage in here. Just due to the nature of being an elemental shaman. And AoE being really strong right now for an elemental. I mean, that could all change in a heartbeat. Don't get me wrong. But I, I, I mean, it's not right now. It's probably not a viable style of AoE. But fuck, is it fun? Now, what I don't want you to think of it as an AoE for like, what, like eight, nine mobs that we just did there. What I want you to think of this style of play as is when you've got a boss with a couple of adds, you're just going to be DPSing that one target. You remember your flame shock is naturally spreading, right? It's naturally, naturally spreading. And if you're okay with managing your own flame shocks, which I'm not sure if it's worth with all the global cooldowns, you could just nuke one target and it'll just ramp up. 
it will just ramp the fuck up and keep going like this. It also reminds you when you have uh, Echo the Elements just how many Lava Surge procs you actually miss out on. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot if you didn't know with the amount of procs. Even on one target, you miss out on quite a lot. Oh, see, I did not pull that. I feel like I've been the king of ninja pulls today, but um, that wasn't me. I'm claiming freedom on that. So we have a, quite a big nuki boss coming up uh, next. This is the one I'm going to be bloodlusting because he needs to die. So I'll go full single target on there. Uh, get that out of the way and that'll be done. And then I'll show you the mixed build, uh, which is kind of like a combination of both. It's good for all scenarios. And that does bring me to the sort of last thing that I want to touch on as we move towards a conclusion, really. The Elemental Shaman has these wonderful, amazing talent builds. It does. They all work on the basic fundamental ideas that an Elemental Shaman works on, the priority system that an Elemental Shaman works on. They all work that way. But, and this is the big but, the likelihood is, right, the likelihood is that in real world play, you're going to fit a role and you're not going to be able to just constantly respec like, between each trash pull. Like, this build I'm using right now is not ideal for killing this at all. What does that mean and what does that hold for your future in things like challenge modes and stuff? Now, the counter to that message, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, it's like you could be super, super effective and you can spec into mega, mega, mega AoE. You can absolutely do that. I've shown you that already. Will that translate well into the different scenarios you'll be playing for guys who are... We could take a look at an outlaw rogue that has some of that as some of the flexibility, but nowhere near as much flexibility in terms of very niche DPS styles. You feel, and I genuinely feel while I'm playing this, I use a lot of subpar talent builds just to demonstrate them for you guys so you know what's going on. You feel, you genuinely feel like you're being less effective. Don't get me wrong, this is like a normal dungeon. I'm having fun. Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun playing this. I just. I have a serious blast when I play this. But I know that I'm being ineffective in a lot of scenarios compared to what I could be doing by playing differently. Now, unless you're at the bleeding edge, it's probably not that big of a deal, right? It's not that big of a deal. But if you are going to be doing things like pushing challenge modes and stuff, you want your spec to be viable. Will it be? The answer to that question is I don't know right now. I hope it is. I hope that it's balanced in a way that you can play any build you want to, but the likelihood is one will be better and whether or not it's going to be consistent enough. You are seriously limited. If this was a speed run, which is obviously not, we've had five fucking healers for Christ's sake, I would still have probably cooldown from Storm Elemental Totem, which means that kind of counts that ability out for any reasonable speed, speed run to be done. I can't do that. In fact, it counts a lot of things out. Incendence is probably out. I would probably have to take Ice Fury, which is useless in a lot of scenarios. Do you understand what I'm trying to get at? So this is a single target fight, so we're going full single target here. So we'll take Aftershock, we'll take uh, Ancestral Swiftness, and we'll take uh, Prime Elementalist. This is kind of our just straight up single target build, as far as I can tell. I'll lust this one. Has that got something written on it? It has. <laughs> uh, what does it say? Lease? <laughs> what is that? I've never noticed that before. Oh, shit. We're pulling. Big meaty lightning bolts. Ascendance. Fire Ellie. While well, we get knocked back. And then we'll just go balls to the wall DPS. Burn, 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 burn. Really wish I didn't have to cast Earthshock while of the effects of Ascendance. Please replace Ascendance. They've, uh, Lava Surge has procced perfectly every single time I've needed it to, <laughs> which is great. Absolutely fantastic. Now, if you've never seen this fight, it's uh, basically a burn fight. Kill it as quickly as possible. That's why we lost it. Flesh the flame shock while we get knocked back. Ooh, slightly out of range. There is one thing I want to talk about while we do this uh, ostensibly boring fight from a DPS perspective, right? We're just nuking. You guys can enjoy the numbers, I guess. Uh, things like... <laughs> you see my wind shear is red. Look how far back I could DPS from here, right? I could DPS from here. Fire off our Stormkeeper. Look at... You can see the wind shear. My ability to interrupt is reddied out. 
It's still running out. Look how far forward I went. Now watch how far I have to go from here. Look how far I have to run to be able to interrupt. Now, it's such a minor thing, but I know many casters out there will be like, it's fine, Preacher, we don't want to be the interrupt guy. That's really irritating. I found it super frustrating on more than uh, a few occasions that um, I can't interrupt at the same range I'm DPSing. And not like it's only a, sm a small thing. It's fucking 25-yard range versus 40. It's enormous. The difference is fucking huge. Really huge. And it fucking bugs me to no end that it's the way it's done. And I really hope they consider that. It's such a minor thing. I know it's a minor thing. But if you guys have been in a raid environment and uh, you're like the backup interrupter, which an elemental shaman often is, right? They're one of the backups. Because enhancement or whatever is usually tied up. And mages are fucking mages and they don't give a shit. So you usually falls to you to deal with that. It really bugs me that you have to be so much closer than where you can DPS from. It really fucking drives me crazy. Like, even here, I can't interrupt if I had to. Hey -oh. Well, we did well here. Down you go. It really drives me up the fucking wall. It's so such an irritating minor thing that I hope they change. Oh, man down. I got you. And um, that would be sort of my main criticism, honestly. If I'm being genuine with you guys, that's my main criticism. Is I really, really fucking detest that. It's awful and annoying. So let's switch back to something. Is the center stone cooldown? Eight seconds. Not bad. Uh, we'll go with Echo. We're going to go with Elemental Fusion. We're going to keep Aftershock because we're going to be doing sort of two target cleave here. We'll take Liquid Magma for what we're doing. And we should be fine and dandy in that. I think Atomic was buffed. Yeah. Go, Stormkeeper! I'm not moving. Oh, I should have moved. <laughs> I should have moved. Ah, oh, well, I'll live. I'll live. Now, while this is my preferred style of play, the one you're seeing now, which mixes in a lot of instant cast and stuff, uh, it absolutely does not mean it's the uh, the bee's knees or anything. And it's, it, it, the, the good thing about Ellie so far is it's entirely subjective. Now, as we move on to... In fact, I was going to show you the mixed build, wasn't I? So I'm going to have to stop playing this one. Boo. Let's go with the mixed build. So in the mixed build, you kind of go with Earthen Rage. You can't take Total Mastery. You take Ancestral Swiftness. Uh, you don't really want to be mixing Elemental Blast into this. Uh, you keep Elemental Fusion, right? Uh, but you generally mix in Lightning Rod. Now, what this gives you is a couple of options. One, your Flame Shock is naturally going to spread. No, it's not. I haven't, didn't take it. This isn't the exact build I want to show you. And basically what you have is you only seem to fire your Lava Burst as Instant Casts because you're getting plenty of extra procs. I know, just making a lot more nature damage in between. And it looks a little something like this. It's still a shitload of fun! There's no getting away from it. You're just mixing more and more lightning bolts into it. Now, whether or not this will become a uh, go-to spec, this one kind of mixed in the middle. Besides Magnitude and Elemental Fusion, uh, it kind of works on its own merits. The only difference is you have to manage your Flame Shock, but you do so much more nature damage that it plays really well into things like Lightning Rod and uh, obviously oh, Stormkeeper. Now, as you get into unlocking a lot of your artifact power, and I can tell you this from playing the level 110, your light, your nature spells become far more important, mainly down to the uh, the buff that you'll get for the power of the Maelstrom. Kurtalos, they come, they do. Together, we shall Together! And this is equally cool, because this means you're mixing in a lot more Chain Lightnings and stuff, as I said. The heavy fire build seems to work ideally for like two to three targets, so particularly when you have one to nuke down. It works really well, because all these extra lava bursts, instant casts are just being tunneled. It's that one target. And you're basically using the others to support using the other targets just to support that. Means that you're really, really fucking good at picking out the most dangerous target in the pack and being the guy who like really helps out with that. Let's drop like liquid magma for the sake of it. Now this still has plenty of lava bursting going on, as you can see. But it also has a heavy nature damage. Yeah? So again, this is why you can mix in some um, lightning rod. I prefer aftershock because we're going to be doing a lot of uh, refreshing of flame shocks with this one. But you still get the power of earthen rage. And again, you can mix it in with top mastery. And that's where it comes down to whether or not it's your favorite, honestly. Which again, if some people prefer having a lot more lightning bolts, they don't like being a fiery turret. 
this is what's so good about this talent build that the Elemental Shaman has at, at its disposal is you can kind of pick that, at least for now. Whether or not Legion will be like, no, that's really bad. <laughs> that's really bad. You can't do that. You'll just be a Chain Lightning Lightning Rod Monkey, which in itself is fine. I mean, I have no particular problem with it, especially because the other stuff that mixes in with there, which will be Power of the Maelstrom and Stormkeeper on its own merits... It's fine. It, it gives enough variation in that every minute or so that it's not just chain lightning roll macro AFK. I want you to take away from me this. The clear fun I'm having, which I am. I'm just having a blast with this. How varied and uh, interesting the playstyle is. It switches up a hell of a lot. The buffs and all that stuff that you have to manage aren't a big deal. Aww. I'm was, I was saving it for one extra second. I got greedy. Got greedy. Anybody who's watched me play the blood uh, blood bomb will know <laughs> the greed is real. If I can squeeze in that extra big dick deep, so I'm gonna do that. And now we're coming to the last boss. So all I'm gonna take is probably ascendance. And there's a lot of movement here, but I can't DPS while I'm moving. Anything else to show you? I think we've covered everything. I'm pretty happy with what I've shown you so far. So I'm gonna stick with this. Uh, I don't want primal elements list. I'll stick with elemental fusion because this uh, just a bit more lava burst is nice. I prefer it, and that's the whole point I'm trying to show you. Is like you play as you, you prefer it, and that's the cool. Let's yolo again. The tank might get the tank might get absolutely wrecked here. Let's get these lightning bursts out of the way. Bzzz. Oh, lightning bolts not critting. The sadness is real. Got a flame Ellie going. I don't think I've ever seen that guy do that glaive thing. That's pretty cool. All right, let's... Uh, I don't want to ascend us this guy. We'll wait till we get our mega buff in phase two. Which is super exciting. We still have the same mechanic as Wad, where we're looking to pretty much um, dump our Maelstrom before it actually procs. You know, our Earth Shocks before it actually hits 100. Something you can focus on. I'm always going to make little mistakes like that while we're doing sort of... Um, a talk over demonstration. As you can imagine, your focus is very, very mixed while you're trying to talk and uh, trying to demonstrate how a spec works. But in general, we do okay. Get away from me, Glaive guy. I don't like you. Uh, ooh! <laughs> you see that? Yeah, man. That's what this bus does to you. Fucking rocks your socks. Yeah, absolutely rocks your socks. Look at the tank running. Run away. Uh, this is going to last longer than two minutes, so I'm going to save my Ascendance. I could probably get away with a cheeky Stormkeeper. Before he disappears. Hopefully, don't fuck me up. Uh oh. Now, what's funny about this is I should be able to tank this, no problem. I'm not joking. This fight is such bullshit. It's just going to take a really, really long time. Uh, which is a bummer. This is a big problem with this fight, and they don't seem to have fixed it yet. What happens is he turns into that very Mathras type guy. And then he gives everybody a huge buff, but there's a delay, a really obnoxious delay between when he um, gives you the buff and when he can attack you. He attacks you with the strength as if you have the buff, right? <laughs> Which is the annoying part. I just bloodlusted while I still had sated. I am the best player of all time. Which I think we can now all agree on. <laughs> Whatever, dude. This fight's going to take fucking forever as it is. So, as I kind of whittle this health down... Ugh, this is a sucky situation to be in, guys. Don't, don't let me lie to you. While I whittle this guy's health down, let me just say that this is one of the better specs I've played in Legion. They have fixed all the problems I had with Elemental in Walls of Draenor. It looks, at least on the surface, that it's going to be fine when it goes live. If they keep the talent system this way, it'd be fine. The only potential problem with it isn't really a big problem at all. It's just a case of whether or not you'll be able to do big talent builds. So, coming back to that subject then as a sort of finale. Burn away. It doesn't really matter if you're in an organized group. The chances are if you're in an organized group of doing challenge modes and stuff, you'll be doing relatively large pulls anyway, right? Which means your sustained big dick fucking chain lightning stormkeeper, fury of the maelstrom, four earthquake, fat lava totem was uh, DPS is going to be fine because you'll be doing that constantly, and that means that you're you're going to be able to take full advantage of the elemental shaman's capabilities. In reference to some people's worries about mobility and all that, 
It's absolutely fine. Ice Fury takes more than enough care of it. And I wouldn't worry about it whatsoever. Assuming there's no major changes. Uh, what else can people consider about? Target switching. It's fixed. The Maelstrom system completely fixes that. Ugh, God, this takes forever. Completely take care of, takes care of that scenario. And you don't have to worry about it whatsoever. It's Everything here seems fixed. The additions are really nice. My biggest complaint is the legacy talents don't fit anymore and if they could they don't have to come up with something more interesting but it would be nice if they did there's nothing really wrong with like l lava totem right there's nothing really wrong with it it just doesn't seem to fit it's this cool fucking idea they had it just doesn't fit anymore the same with ascendants you've seen how i could turn my lava burst just through various other talent choices it's a something really really fun which then makes ascendants look bad and the solution isn't to change all those other talents so you can't play that way the solution is to make Ascendance more interesting. And... Or just give us something else in the interim. Ascendance is cool. I would like Ascendance Farm. I would like Ascendance Farm to trigger. That's what I would like. If certain things happen, then you can trigger Ascendance Farm. It might not even do anything, but you just look that way. Nah. So boring. Real shame, this fight. Uh, it's, I get that it's supposed to be interesting. I'm sure on the challenge mode version, it'll be fine. But as it stands, God, it's so dull. Especially if a couple of people die. I think I did the... Um, I think I... Did I do the Blood DK video here? I think I pointed out the big fear that you get with this fight. We have a send us back. It's a minute 50. Mm, till Bloodlust. Yeah. What's that mage? Uh, I'll save it. I'll save it till after the next one. Why not? We'll pop all our cooldowns. It'll be joyous. I love this. I really love this. My complaints aren't really complaints. They're just would be nices. Yeah? Would be nice if is the simple way I would say it. It would be nice if this did this and this did that. Uh, let's pop our Earth Ellie. Why the fuck not? Go Earth Ellie. Oh, 1,000 damage. What a boss. <laughs> what an absolute fucking hero. Uh. Burn away. Burn away. Burn away. Burn away. I don't want you to walk away with this thinking this is a terrible dungeon. It's a slight... I've got to call it a bug. It's just a slight bug that the boss can hit you with the full fury of this phase that he's hitting me with now before you get his buff. Uh, any tanks, I just recommend you pop fucking Bloodlust before this happens. <laughs> uh, not Bloodlust, but... Um, what am I saying? Shield wall or something like that if you haven't used it already. Just to uh, sort of ease yourself into getting the, the health buff. My health right now is uh, five and a half million. <laughs> so you can see the healer heals for like 600,000 and stuff. <laughs> it's, it's supposed to be a really fun part of the fight because you get this huge damage buff. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be fun. It just isn't. So we're going to go for an Ascendant's Bloodlust after this, guys. You excited? I hope so. I might pop a Berserking along with it for troll, troll, troll dominance. And that's gonna bring us home bring home the bacon. Ba 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 ba. Oh, I'm on the wrong side. Excited. Ghost Wolf trivialization. Ghost Wolf's OP, please nerf. Please nerf the Ghost Wolf. Here comes the big burn. Come on. Show me potato salad. Uh, let's do Stormkeeper first. Rawr! All the haste buffs. I mean, it carries the weight of the nuke, doesn't it? But, uh... <laughs> the, for the just unfortunate fact is I could do it elsewhere. Which is really sad. Earth Elemental, go! Rawr! Do all the DPS. Oh, another phase? God damn. At least we're with a Disc Priest that's doing uh, you know, a considerable level of damage to it. Disappear again. 17 million to go, guys. <laughs> Oop. Oh, pure warrior could be executing for big numbers now. Do you feel sorry for him? No. No. Never feel sorry for a warrior. You'll make them soft. Warriors should never be hugged. Making my warriors soft, guys. Don't do it. Down we go. 
Thank you so much for watching The Elemental Shaman. I hope you guys come away from this with your fears alleviated, if you had any. Or the fact that you might have another viable class. Or if this looks shit to you, then that's that's kind of on you, I guess. <laughs> that's kind of on you. Uh, but there you go. There you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, The Elemental Shaman in its glory. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to revisiting this towards the end of the Legion beta. Bye-bye.